it's me. It's not you, it's me. Have you heard that before? Um, no, nah, that's good. Some people just, what is he talking about? Um, Arimide, there is so much more to your story that I'm really looking forward to hearing. And, uh, and uh, God, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to highlight just prophetically that God is going to use you. And I'm not going to say anything you don't already know, but I just want to say that um, God is going to use, use you profoundly as his mouthpiece. And I know that you know that. Uh, and it's not that, it's not just that I love listening to your accent. I could listen to you all day. <laughs> I love embarrassing Arimide because he can't tell when she's embarrassed. <laughs> God is going to use you as a mouthpiece, okay? And um, uh, as he establishes his word and his truth in your life, um, it, that's just going to increase. The platform is going to increase. So the more word you have, the more the platform you'll, you'll be given, okay? So praise God. Let's just praise God for that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Um, I anticipated uh, the interview going for a little bit longer, but well done, Rose, on keeping to time. That's fantastic. Normally, well, when we have our your stories, which the whole emphasis on your story is your story is our story and our story is your story. And your story, your story, not the story just had, although that's important, your story is absolutely vital and important to the kingdom. It's, in vital, for, it's vital for you to be able to share your life, to be able to share the story that God is writing on your heart, writing through you to those around you. Because we've all had different experiences. We've all had uh, different walks. We've all come from different uh, backgrounds, different cultures, um, different experiences of only this this week as opposed to the last 10 years or whatever. So um, it's just super exciting and uh, uh, I look forward to, as a church family, uh, us discovering more about each other. How many know that you can know somebody for 20 years and not really get to know them? And so, you know, uh, how can we be a community of faith if we don't know each other? You know, in the Acts, the early Acts church, uh, it, uh, it was that they broke bread together daily. They lived together daily. There was still work to be done. There were still things to be done. But they, they lived in community. And, uh, and I think the Holy Spirit is going to um, give us revelation on what it is to live in community. If you can open your Bibles now to uh, Romans chapter 6. I have to excuse my voice a little bit. It's... Uh, um, it's been a busy week. Too much talking, of course. How are we doing? Good. Great. It's great to have the Burgi family here. Burgesses. Burgis. Yeah, fantastic. But remember, Burgesses. Kids are growing up a little bit, just a fraction. It's been a while. Romans chapter 6, and uh, I just get a sense that um, we've talked about some significant themes over the, last, over the last few weeks, and these themes have been all about, yes, life and passion, it's about us uh, living life with more life. Hello? Yes. Living life with more life, living life with greater passion, to uh, live life with greater purpose and be missional in our focus. And so to be missional in our focus, we have, to, um, we have to live life intentionally. How many know that life just doesn't happen all around us? Some people live like that and, uh, and then 10, 20 years goes by and you say, well, you know, what, what did I do? Another year over and what have I done? You know, you know the song. And so... Um, and so uh, it's this element of uh, if we, if we, and, and I, I would ask that question and highlight it, if we, and it's not just you, it's us together, if we as a church are going to see the city of Melbourne saved, We must be intentional in the way that we live. Okay? 
We have to adjust. How many know that the city of Melbourne has not yet been saved? There was a prophetic word just a few weeks ago. I'm not going to drill down into this, but there was a prophetic word just a few weeks ago that uh, God spoke to several prophets that said, if I can just have one city in a nation, the whole nation will turn. So let's just all move to Ballarat because it's smaller and we can just... No. Just one city. And so why not the city of Manningham? Why not? Why not? How many know that if the entire city of Manningham was saved, there'd still be problems in Manningham? Yeah, because you're in Manningham. <laughs> We, 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 you know, how many know that if an entire nation was following Jesus, were faithful followers of Jesus Christ, there'd still be problems in the nation? Because you have an opinion, I have an opinion, and Joe Bloggs down the road has an opinion. Well, I've learned really quick, I can't afford to have my own opinion. I can only have the opinion that Jesus has, right? Yeah. Amen? The point is, God said, give me a city and I'll have the whole nation. Because what would happen, and let's just dream a little bit, what would happen if, uh, if one city was saved? What would happen if one city was saved? So in every, in every single person became a follower and a disciple of Jesus Christ. What would happen with that, with that city? Well, I'll tell you a few things. There would be the benchmark of righteousness. Morally, things would change. Business would change. Business dealings would change. We have seen regions where there has been revival, where uh, uh, plant and biological life has changed. See, there's a reason why in Habakkuk it says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, then I will what? Heal their land. Heal, so a healing would take place upon the land. Hello? Are you catching this? Start to dream a little bit about an entire city coming into the faith and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. What do you think would happen to, with crime levels? What would happen to... Um, our television stations, based in Melbourne. What would happen to our radio stations? All right, let's dream about this. What would happen to our children's lives? Okay, so what then would happen is here would become a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Hello? And be lifted up as a pinnacle example for the rest of the nation. Do you know that this is already happening in certain cities? Hello? (laughs) State municipalities are turning to the churches because they can't understand why the church community is so much more prosperous, so much more healthy than the rest of the town, rest of the city. So why not the city of Manningham? Oh, heck, why not all of Melbourne? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Isn't it easy? We, you can agree with me probably a bit easier if you say, oh, yes, city man. Hey, how about Templestowe? Why not Templestowe? Okay, why not your street? <laughs> all right, all right, why not your neighbour? Why not? You see, this is how a city is taken. How do you need an ele- eat an elephant? All right. So, this is it here. So, these are, these are, these are, <laughs> you're vegan. No, you're not. <laughs> so, nothing against vegans. Listen, when I eat a lamb, it was eating me- grass, so that's fine. So, technically, I'm eating grass. So, the point is... So, the... The point is, chocolate's a vegetable, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, it's not, Pastor Man. Okay, so 
The, here, are some, here is a couple of highlights, and I just, I just want to share my heart just really quickly today. My heart is this, is that I want what God wants. Do you want what God wants? Yes. Okay. So in order to do that, we must live life on purpose, missional, right? And so these are the things that God is saying. God is saying, give me a city. How do we give God a city? Well, we can give him to him right now. Lord, have Melbourne. It's yours. Right? See, what happens is we then become the gate that we've been talking about. So when we, need, when we say, God, Father, have this city of Melman. Uh, the Awakening Australia event at 7 o'clock each night, no matter where we are as a family, no matter what we're doing, that alarm goes off. We stop what we're doing and we say, God, this nation of Australia is yours. Lord, let it begin in Melbourne. And God's not confused because all the pre- people in Brisbane are saying, Lord, let it begin in Brisbane. And all the people in Perth are saying, Lord, let it begin in Perth. No, nah, let it begin in Melbourne because Melbourne's the most livable city in the world, right? <laughs> God's bigger than that, right? So the point is this. When we say, God, have this nation of Australia, we actually become that gate. That gate of where the scripture says in Psalms, and it says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. And it's just like this. It's like lift up and become a gate. There's this notion of if you are living life low down or living life small, then you will never ever be able to be an effective gate for the King of Glory to come in. Because this is why the scripture says lift up, right? Lift up. And I liken it, I wrote it in the Team MCC uh, email this week, that I liken it to being being a bit like a medieval gate that uh, just its own weight would uh, close it down. But to lift up the gate, to lift up that that, uh, uh, gate, it had an enormous amount of effort. But once it was up, once it was up, and it's a bit like when we raise our hands during worship, and by the way, fantastic response to worship. I loved what you brought as a church to, to, to the Lord this morning in worship. It was fantastic, so well done. But as that, as that level, as we lift up our hands, I liken it, we become suddenly that open gate for the Lord to come in. It says, open up your gates for the, and let the King of glory in. And so it's like we become gatekeepers for our cities, for our streets, for our neighbourhoods. We become gatekeepers for, um, for our families as well. Do you understand that? We become those places where the King of glory can enter in. Amen? And so the Lord is saying, give me a city and I'll take a nation. Lord, we give you this city of Melbourne. We become that gate. And we say, King of glory, enter into this city. Enter into our situations. Enter in to this new creation that you have created us to be. All right? And then uh, comes this moment of radical change in people's lives and radical change in cities and streets. And for us who have been walking with the Lord for more than five minutes, we suddenly become an example to those who are new in the faith. So we suddenly become that person that can disciple another person. (laughs) I think sometimes we're afraid to lead somebody to the Lord because we feel the responsibility of discipling them further. Doesn't that sound so selfish? You can't enter into salvation because I can't be bothered leading you. It's not a condemning word, but what it is, is I'm calling for us to step into that place of responsibility that says, you have eternity in your heart. That as we understand our mission, our mission that is possible to a God that nothing is impossible for him, then we can step into this mission of taking cities. 
we can step into this mission of taking cities one life at a time. Speaking life into somebody's life, living as an example. And you see, as, as, it was, as it's written here in Romans chapter 6, and we're going we're gonna to read from verse 16, it says, Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? But God be thanked that through, though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, everybody say set free. set free. You became slaves of righteousness. Slaves of righteousness. So from the point of interesting, from the point of view, from the point of view of from the point of view of it's like choose choose whom you're going to obey. To be a slave of righteousness says that we will be about the Lord's work. We carry a responsibility to the world. And let's start with one city. Hello? Understand today we're talking about personal mission. Notice I haven't talked about personal gifting, personal charisma, the first five steps to evangelizing your street. No, because as people, we need to understand that what we have been set free from and brought into eternal life, that alone should compel us to tell one other person the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news of the gospel. And we might tell them by making a meal. We might tell them by offering a an arm or a shoulder to cry on. We might tell them by blessing them in some way. Amen? Ephesians 2 says it like this. Verse 4, I'm reading out of the Passion Translation. But God still loved us with such great love. He is so rich in compassion and mercy. Even when we were dead and doomed in our many sins, he united us into the very life of Christ and saved us by his wonderful grace. He raised us up with Christ, the exalted one. He, being who? Father. Father raised us up with Christ, the exalted one. And we ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm for we are now joined as one with Christ do you know what that means for you (laughs) it means your mission is his mission your calling is his calling And he has called you to be dead to the old man. Let me go on. (laughs) 1 Timothy 4 says, Be diligent in devouring the word of God. Be faithful in prayer. Verse 13, be faithful in prayer and in teaching the believers. I love this commandment that Paul gave to Timothy. He said this, Don't, in verse 14, don't minimize the powerful gift that operates in your life. We could just finish there. Because I could ask you this. Has the gift that God has placed within your life been minimized? Rose started off this morning by talking about the definition of unstoppable. Who loves Superman? <laughs> TK's got it right. That was prophetic, mate. That's, you know. <laughs> TK's got a Superman top on. So Superman's unstoppable. 
It, he died, yeah. <laughs> Let's just hone in on the big, big matters here this morning. So, <coughs> so you have been given this glorious gift in your life. You have been given the very power. The Bible says that the very power that raised Christ from the dead is alive and well in you today. Amen? So this message today is simply this. Don't minimise the powerful gift that operates in your life. Don't minimise the powerful gift that operates in your life. It's the power of Christ in you. It's the power of life unto salvation. It's the power of miracles. It's the power of neighbourhoods. It's the power of lives changed. It's the power of city streets. It's the power of regions. It's the power of cities. It's the power of nations. Do you understand that through Christ in you, you hold the power to take cities? You hold the power to see prisons brought into salvation. You hold the power to see your family turn to Jesus. The Bible says it's the kindness or the goodness of God that leads unto repentance. It says, as people turn to him, the veil is lifted. How many have some friends and family that the veil needs to lift? Well, you are the turning. You are the turning for them. Because as you live your life in power, not minimising the gift that has been placed within you, your influence grows. Therefore, as I started off by saying today, you become that city on a hill that cannot be hidden. You become that place. And you say, well, you know, I just, I just want to be humble. So I don't want everybody to see me. Nonsense. They're not seeing you, you duffer. (laughs) They're seeing Jesus. So if I had more time, I would say, get over yourself. It's not about you. But we don't have time to say that. Because it is about Jesus. It's the power of the gospel that leads unto salvation. Amen. That miracle working power. Hey, sometimes we've got to just get back to the good old gospel, don't we? Yes, come on. The truth of his word that is alive in us. So this. The old man is dead. <laughs> can you say that with me? The old man is dead. You can say, my old man is dead. So don't raise him up. So let's not speak, let's not pray, let's not walk as an old man does. In powerlessness, slaves to sin, slaves to lawlessness, slaves to unrighteousness. But let's walk as the new man. It's the new Christ within us. I'm not saying there's a lot of different Christs, but it's him in you. Amen? Let's pray. Let's stand. Let's pray. I meant to say let's stand, but I said let's pray. Is there a difference? Praise God. So, life and passion, amen? So, I want to just lead you in a very quick activation. I know we've done this a couple of times before. But I want you, on the count of three, we're going to lift up the gate. Is that cool? So I want you to pretend that you're one of those medieval gates 
that, I, and I know there's going to be some people who are weirded out by this. And look, listen, it's an invitation, not an expectation. Amen? You want to live closed, you just stay closed, okay? Is that cool? But if you want to live open, let's open up this gate. So it was a prophetic act, all right? I just want you to get, in, on the count of three, I want you to get down low, as low as you can go. And then on the count of three, I want you to invite Jesus through and lift up that gate, raising your hands high unto the Lord with a shout of Jesus. Is that cool? You ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Jesus! Come in, O Lord. Jesus, come. We lift up these gates, O God, that you would enter in. Come in your power, O Lord. Come in your majesty, O Lord, because you are the King of glory. And Lord, we declare your church to be unstoppable, Lord. Lord, give us this city. Give us this city. Give us this city, Lord. We declare Melbourne to be yours. We declare Manningham to be yours, God. And Lord, your goodness, your grace, and your love to be released in this house. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We all said, amen. Amen. Who felt something released right now? Yeah? I just felt something charged today. And so if you have pain in your body, if you need prayer, if you need a directional word in your life, come forward. We want to stand with you in prayer. We want to seek the Lord and see if there might be a prophetic word for you. And so if you uh, if you need a prophetic word, come over to my left-hand side, your right-hand side. If you need healing, I'm going to ask the ministry team to come forward now. And, uh, and if you need healing, come over this side here. Now, if you... If you uh, want a, a fresh touch of personal mission, so let's say what we've been talking about this entire month so far just seems a bit foreign to you and you need a breakthrough. There needs to come some scales off your eyes, so to speak, so that you can see truth. I want you to come to the middle here. We're going to stand and, and we're going to help you encounter the Holy Spirit in a new way today. And so as the worship team leads us in, in a song, I'm going to ask you guys to come forward quickly. If you don't know Jesus and you've never invited Jesus into your heart, bring somebody forward with you. So let them stand with you. We want to lead you in a prayer. Uh, leading you into the power of absolute eternal life, which is going to be super exciting. Amen? Amen? And so come forward.